This episode of Two and a Half Geeks is brought to you by Data Robotics Drobo. You may be familiar with Drobo for the home user, but for small to medium-sized companies, check out drobo.com slash business for simple, sophisticated storage solutions for the enterprise. Coming up, a Dell Android phone, AMD graphics cards, 10 core processors, a contest, and more. I think my head's going to explode. The bar has been set wicked fast. It rocked in the benchmarks. We're going to up the ante uh, a little bit. Processing power. Maybe. I kind of understand this. Hello. Dude. I said hello and welcome to Two and a Half Geeks. I'm Maya Zaktar alongside Dave Altavilla and Marco Cipetta of Hot Hardware. How are you guys doing? I am chillaxing. <laughs> How about you, Dave? <laughs> really? Well, I, yes. I'm living the dream. That's all there is to it. And I'll form the head. Uh, that's a whole Voltron joke, and it is not what you think it is. So get your head, your head out of the gutter. Let's talk about Dell's Android phone. The, I think it's the Venue. Now, Dell can't really make an Android tablet work at all. We've seen the streak, and uh, it's been universally <laughs> it's been universally panned. I'm not kidding. It, a lot of people don't like it, including myself. How did they do with the cell phone, Dave? You're such a bitter, cynical man. I'm a realist. It's a big difference. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll call it yeah, turd no, to turd. We'll, I'll do it. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Um, you know, again, I I like this stuff. This was this was a you know a solid piece of hardware in my opinion. Um, you know, it, not the most bleeding edge technology. It's got a one gigahertz Qualcomm Snapdragon processor, a single core processor, sixteen gig of onboard memory. Um, what it does have, which is really nice, is an eight megapixel webcam. The display is a beautiful 4.1 inch uh, AMOLED display that has just, uh, you know, really nice, you know, viewing angles, contrast, brightness, a little bit of glare, very high gloss, um, you know, Corning Gorilla Glass uh, front, you know, face on it. But, um, you know, just a, a really sleek, smooth, stylish handset. I, I liked it a lot. Now, Android's been, it's become very mature lately. Did Dell do anything to skin the operating system or did they just say, hey, look, Android's good enough? Yeah, Dell's got this thing called their Stage UI, and uh, you you know Stage User Interface, and and it's actually it's nice. It's it's basically um, a little bit like what HTC does with their Sense User Interface. Um, they set up you know custom home screens or stages that you can tweak and adjust to your likings with your favorite apps or perhaps your email or your music or what have you. And, you know, does a nice job of sort of organizing and getting you quick access to the things that you want to use the most. Um, it's a little bit, you know, media centric uh, in that, again, you can, you know, uh, look at your, your, your music library, which is kind of nice, obviously, on these, these handsets. I mean, a lot of folks are, are using them as, uh, as, you know, MP3 players or what have you. So, yeah, you know, not too bad. It doesn't get in the way. Um, doesn't seem to slow the handset down all that much. It's... it's um, it's it's a, a nice sort of light overlay and uh, and you can kind of push it out of the way and, and, and drill down to Android 2.2 if you'd like. Real quick, if you had to pick Dell Streak Five versus Dell Venue, what do you pick? Oh, the Venue. I mean, you know, the Streak Five is is nice. Um, it's too big. It's it's not quite a handset. It's not quite a tablet. Kind of in the way. It's um, not quite I, anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I like the the Five. I, I, I like a Seven better. Um, and yeah, the Venue's a nice handset. I mean, you know, for, as smartphones go, it's it's a nice. The other thing that's cool about it is it's an unlocked uh, AT&T capable phone. It's the only unlocked AT&T capable phone on the market right now. So, you know, world phone, unlocked, drop a SIM in anywhere you go. It's kind of nice. Marco, what do you have there? That's not a Dell Venue, is it? <laughs> this is this is not a Dell venue. This really? is the uh, the new AMD Radeon 6, HD 6790, the uh, the new hundred and forty nine dollar card that just launched a, a few days ago. And what, what's HD. interesting about it? Can I get that right now? Can you can get it right now. But before we get into some specifics, let me point out that the card that I just held up and showed you is never really going to see the light of day. It's strictly a reference design right, that right. was used by board partners to make their own custom designs. And all the cards that have hit retail um, look nothing like the card I just held up. They all have their own custom coolers and printed circuit boards. Well, forget about the actual look to it. How did it perform? It performed decent. So um, it's a $149 card, as I mentioned. It goes uh, directly against NVIDIA's uh, recently released GeForce Ti. I'm sorry, GeForce 550 Ti. 
And uh, generally speaking, the 6790 is faster. It was faster than the 550 Ti more often than not. Um, but we're talking playable frame rates at 1920 on down um, with, you know, 30 frames per second in some modern titles. If you get too taxing with a high-end DX11 title like Alien vs. Predator or Metro 2033, not quite playable at the highest quality settings. But if you just dial it down a notch, you're basically playable across the board. Are there other uh, other cards at that same price point that would outperform it, or is it at the top? So at, at its exact price point, not really. It's pretty good at its price point. But for $15, $20 more, um, maybe $30 more, you can get a, a lot of extra performance by investing in something like a, a, a Radeon 6850 um, you know, or, or a GeForce 560 Ti, just basically going one notch higher. For a little bit more money, you get a, a lot more performance. What about the HD6450? What do you know about that? <laughs> so the 6450 uh, was just announced, depending when this is, uh, is going to be published, uh, a day and a half ago. It's a new $55 card. Now, the 6450, it's a DX11 card, so it has basically the same feature set as something like the 6790, but it performs much lower. You know, we're talking 160 stream processors versus 800 stream processors. So the 6450 is more of a replacement for integrated graphics, um, you know, an upgrade from integrated graphics, you know, than a, a powerful discrete card, something like the 6790 or If you higher. had something like Sandy Bridge or any of those Fusion uh, AMD processors, would you need anything like this? So yes and no. If you want a little extra performance, yes. I, I have some, some graphs where I compare it to the Sandy Bridge graphics, and it's much faster, you know, in, in games. Now, when you're talking multimedia playback, they're comparable. ATI does have slightly better video quality, much more stable and trustworthy drivers uh, than Intel's graphics drivers have been. So for the $55 investment, if you just want something a little better than integrated, it's probably worth it. Speaking of Intel, Intel just showed off, I believe it's the E-Series Xeon processors that have 10 cores. 10 cores. I know Hot Hard Hardware covered it. Uh, it's for apparently mission critical servers. Uh, Dave, what exactly is this going to be used for? Yeah, it's it's it, these chips are, are absolutely for for what you call big iron. Uh, there's no question about it. Uh, you're not going to see this. Uh, well, you might see this in an enthusiast desktop or two for people that are just crazy about performance and have to have the <laughs> fastest, baddest thing they can get. Yeah, Marco's raising his hand. Pick me. So, <laughs> yeah, ten cores, twenty threads with hyper threading. Um, it's got thirty meg of on chip cache. Uh, it, it supports up to 32 gig DIMMs, uh, <laughs> two terabytes per um, server in a four socket server, two terabytes of, of, of memory. I mean, just crazy, crazy scalability, crazy performance, uh, you know, in, in a chip. It's wild. I'm getting flushed just thinking about it. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart for uh, part of, of this thing being a an enthusiast's dream. Where is it actually going to be in the real world? I mean, obviously, we can't just go out and buy this. Is this just going to be in servers and we'll just use it when we access the web? When do we actually get to play with this at all? Yeah, this is, a, this is absolutely a, a server data center uh, type product. Um, definitely for um, you know, folks in that space, uh, high performance PC, high performance computing, um, you know, absolutely in, in that uh, realm as well. The, the workstation folks that just, you know, they got to have as, uh, as much cr uh, number crunching horsepower as they can get their hands on. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and the nice thing about it is, you know, with Intel's advancements in th their 32 nanometer technology and, the, and the, uh, the clock gating, the dynamic clock gating, the power savings uh, features that they've built into these chips that, you know, literally can shut down cores to zero watt power consumption, um, you know, at idle. Um, you know, these actually result in greener, you know, more power efficient data centers that um, allow, you know, geeks like us to have all the bandwidth and, and access we, we can get at, uh, without, you know, killing the planet. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of cool um, to, to watch the evolution. Um, the other thing that these chips have built in, because they sort of pull from the Sandy Bridge architecture um, that Intel's uh, recently launched, um, they also have uh, advanced uh, encryption uh, security uh, processing engines on board. So, you know, IPsec is going to be real important, you know, moving forward. It continues to be important and, and it's only going to get more so. Um, you know, so, so these chips are, are much faster at, at processing security uh, streams and, and, uh, and encryption requirements uh, 
and you know, moving forward in terms of the web, you know, security is going to be a big thing. So while good it, stuff. While it borrows a little bit from Sandy Bridge, when are we going to see some of these things trickle down to consumer level things? That's what's exciting, and that's what gets Marco all jolly over there. <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, obviously, yeah, server architectures, you know, Intel, you know, if, if you look at their history, they've, they've tended to sort of roll out, you know, their next generation technology in the server space first, especially when it comes to scaling up number of cores. And um, it's anybody's guess when we see a 10-core desktop chip. Uh, we're, we're seeing six-core chips now. Uh, and you know that that's coming. I, I, Marco, did we hear a little bit about um, a, a next gen uh, Intel chip that we could talk about for the des desktop? I don't think we can uh, talk about that without having to shoot somebody, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a, there, there there is a new high end socket coming to replace uh, socket thirteen sixty six, and it, yes. it will house a higher end Sandy Bridge derivative. Whether it's just right. like one of these Xeons, can't say just yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Marco, do you have anything from Intel you could give us a little show and tell about, maybe? I do. What is that? There it is. This is their new uh, 320 series SSD. Ain't you pretty? It looks, pretty. Like, it looks like a deck of cards. What, what's interesting about it? <laughs> so what's interesting is, uh, you know, this is a new SATA 2 SSD. So, you know, about a month back, we looked at the Intel 510, which was a SATA 3 SSD that offered, you know, 400 plus megs a second of read bandwidth. Whereas this is a brand new, well, technically brand new product. Uh, it's still just catering to SATA 2 users. But Intel's goal was to basically maximize the performance of that SATA 2 interface. And uh, the card's rated for 270 meg plus reads and writes. But what's really interesting is it's using the same controller as the Gen 2 X25M, and it significantly outpaces that in terms of reads and write bandwidth, um, even with the same controller. Now, Intel was able to achieve that through a, a, some optimized firmware and newer NAND flash, um, but at the heart of this thing is basically the same chip that's been out since 2008. So Intel's been able to tweak an old technology to get more speed out of it. Go sort figure. of. So <laughs> when, when Intel's uh, G2 SSD hit, you know, the scuttlebutt was Intel was purposefully holding back performance because they didn't really need it. Uh, and firmware updates would later unlock more performance. Mm -hmm. And it ended up happening at one point. It went from 70 meg writes to 100 meg writes with a firmware update. This newer one, even with the same controller, is, is over 200 megs in writes. So there's more performance there. They're not going to be tweaking the firmware for the older drives. Um, but yeah, the, the, the technology, the controller at the heart of this drive has been out for a while and Intel was able to wring a lot more performance from it. Now this crazy image that a bunch of people are going to find some old Intel tech from 2008 and be like, maybe it can go faster and just try and try to tweak you know, everything. It's, it's entirely <laughs> possible, but I don't think uh, very likely that uh, the homebrew guys are going to be able to tweak like that. What did that thing cost, by the way? 300 gigabytes, it's got to be pricey. You know, actually, that's actually uh, the strong point. The 300 gig model is 529, so $1.76 a gig, which is very competitive. So th there's models ranging from 40 gig to 600 gig uh, in this family, um, with prices ranging from about 225 a gigabyte to $1.74 a gigabyte. So it's cutting edge tech in terms of the chips that are inside there, in terms of the NAND flash. Um, prices are going to probably come down a little further with these drives. Um, so considering it's it's brand new it's actually priced very well those prices still sound like i have to spend money what if i didn't want to spend any money and have a killer rig do you guys got anything for that dave maybe a contest yeah you'd, you'd come hang with us that's that's what you'd do by gum <laughs> and uh, yeah so we're running the uh, spring fling killer 3d gaming rig contest uh, at hot hardware this month and uh, it's actually you know one of the most um popular and highly trafficked uh, contest we've had yet. I mean, this is just an amazing system with support from NVIDIA, Intel, Patriot Memory, ASUS, and of course, our good friends at Maingear who are going to build this big, big, beautiful beast. It's uh, based on Intel Sandy Bridge Core i7 uh, 2600 processor at 3.4 gigahertz. It's got a pair of NVIDIA uh, GeForce GTX 580 um, GPUs in it. Um, it's got you know, all kinds of stuff. I mean, 16 gig of Patriot DDR3 memory, 120 gig Intel SSD, and uh, NVIDIA's 3D Vision Kit to go with it. Um, and an Asus 3D monitor, 120 hertz uh, panel, 23-inch uh, panel. It's just an amazing system uh, that we're, we're giving away. And we're going to go to Main Gear, actually, next week. We're heading down there. People have been asking, when are you guys going? When are you going? Well, we're going next week. 
and we're gonna we're gonna shoot the the factory. We're gonna show you around uh, the plant and uh, show you how this thing's built, main gear style. Gonna be kind of cool. And of course, you can find the contest details and all the stories we talk about at hothardware.com. Or if you want to go around the web, check out Hot Hardware content. Check out dig.com slash hot hardware, twitter.com slash hot hardware, facebook.com slash hot hardware, and youtube.com slash hot hardware vids, where you can see all kinds of fantastic videos of like technologies being bandied about, like this snazzy Microsoft mouse. Well, <laughs> maybe not that. Maybe not that. Maybe <laughs> stuff that's way more interesting. But you can find all kinds of things in the archives. You never know, you know? Oh, yeah, like last week when we were talking about the April Fool's episode. If you weren't aware, <laughs> well, you were kind of kidding. We were messing with you. But those were all real technologies. That was all real stuff, minus the, that last thing, the uh, graphics card. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, what was that called? <laughs> I forgot. It was, it, was, it was measured in all kinds of, uh, I think, Bungholio things and others. So yeah. uh, we hope you enjoyed our April Fool's joke. Uh, if you didn't, then um, then you have no sense of humor. True. <laughs> then go to the forums or the co the comments. They've been redone and just write horrible things right there. Okay, <laughs> use the good commenting system and vote down if you hated the episode. Okay, yes. sure. Well, I mean, you have the features. You might as well use them, right? Yes. Right. True. All right. Now, <laughs> here's well, where we say goodbye. So long. <laughs> Thanks for stopping Ciao. by. <laughs>